welcome to the Knitworthy Podcast tutorial for Project Craft. Are you ready? I think so. Brienne is our <laughs> Brienne is our hesitant crafter. I am, <laughs> and so <laughs> she tests everything. And if Brienne can do it, then anyone can do it. Not because she has a difficulty doing it, but she is a little hesitant when it comes to crafting. So mm -hmm. this is to show you, you can do this today. And today we are doing a very cool thing, which is adding a pocket to our journal. And who doesn't need more pockets? Look at this. Woohoo! Woohoo! I found Woo yoga pants with pockets. That's how much I love them. Wow. Yeah. That's pocket love. It is. Come on now. So Bring on the pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Join us for making your own pocket for your journal or anything else that you might need a pocket for. Stay tuned. Are you ready, Rianne? I believe so. <laughs> okay. I will become more enthusiastic as this goes on. Awesome. I promise. <laughs> yes. Okay. We are making a pocket. A library card pocket, it's sometimes referred to. The kind of pocket that you will find that look, oh, there it's in my other journal, no, isn't it? No, that's oh, my here. journal. Oh, that's, <laughs> look like this when you go to the library. I've embellished this one a little bit. But in the old fashioned days, you used to, do they still do these? No. Yeah, in the old fashioned days, you used to use a card pocket that looked like something like this. But we're gonna make one that uh, is using the template that is in the Project Craft tab with uh, on our website, which is knitworthypodcast.com. Very good. And what I used it for this time was I put a copy of my mitten pattern that I'm going to be using as an ongoing challenge um, so that I wouldn't have to keep looking it up. And so that's what I'm using it for. I also put a picture of what I was making so I wouldn't forget what it was supposed to turn out like. <laughs> and we've talked more about that in our podcast today so you can learn more there. So let's get on with it. When you download the um, the printable, it is going to look like this. You are going to um, get a template for an, a card. I use the card to write my pattern, but you can use it for any purpose. And then you're going to get a template for the envelope itself. Now, Brianne has already cut her template out. Because you already know I have mad cutting skills, people. Oh yeah. And she's already colored it. And so what we're gonna do is show you how to assemble it and place it on your project. And then we're going to take it up a notch. <laughs> you ready, Brianne? I am. All yes. right. Okay, there are the tabs. Let's first of all, this is simple. Let's do this card first. Yes, it's the simplest. Okay. You fold on the dotted line. <laughs> that I can do. Awesome. And I'm all about doing an extra little uh, push when it comes to these fold lines so that you end up with a nice good, a nice uh, solid crease. Okay. All right, and so Hello. I added some embellishment to it. If you do not want the embellishment, you can certainly just take the size of paper and cut it out of whatever paper you like and make your insert out of that. Okay, so we'll move that out of the way because I think they understand that. Now, if we can go on to the pocket template. Okay. Brianne, uh, you'll see there's numbers on the tabs. Yes. So let's identify them for the One, camera. Two and three. I think we can need to scooch down a little bit more. Okay. There we go. So number one is the first tab you're gonna fold over and we're using the you're gonna fold it the other direction. Okay. I'm folding it in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And then fold number two the same way. What you're doing is giving yourself a space to glue to so that the front little uh, panel will have something to glue to and still leave room for your card. Okay, do I do three as now well? Now you're gonna do number three. It's as simple as one, two, three. That's just way too easy. If your pocket fits tightly, and this is where I would suggest before you glue, we're going to, to try putting the card in there. If there's any problems, we want to know about that. 
Nope, mine fits very easily. Okay, you could also, you could choose to cut your card if it doesn't fit, or you could, um, you could adjust where you're folding your tabs. Okay. Now, for the sake of this demo, I don't want you to actually glue it, but once you have it folded, I'm gonna just describe what to do. You would put your glue along here and along here, and then fold it down, and then you're gonna apply glue to the back and place it wherever you want it to be, okay? All right. Now, I'm not gonna glue this one yet because I want you first to trace around it for the bringing it up a notch. What? Okay. If you want a fancy scrapbook paper pocket, you need a piece of scrapbook paper that is larger than your template and it needs to have two beautiful sides to it. Okay. All right. So for the sake of the video, it'd probably be best if we um, did the tracing on the solid color. So Brianne, you're just going to place your template and you're going to draw around it. I'm just give you a sharp, Sharpie marker. Okay. And we're going to trace around it and this will give us a beautiful two-sided effect that I think is quite lovely. But if you just have copy paper and you want a simple one, I wanted you to have an embellished pocket that you could use to tuck in whatever you're using it for. So that's why we included that. Also, if you wanted to have, for instance, your pocket fit some a certain size photo or something like that, you're using it for like a keepsake pocket, you could use this template and adjust the uh, size once you know what the shape is supposed to be, you can adjust the size larger and get a larger pocket, obviously, or a smaller one. All right, so Brianne, why don't you go ahead and cut that out for us. Okay. All right, now. Whew. So Brianne, this one does not have the dotted lines, but I bet you can figure out I, how to manage without them. I bet I can. Okay, so Brianne's folding in flap number one, flap number two, and flap number three. Um, if you're using them in your journal, you could also use them for uh, putting a sample of the yarn. If you don't want to use it as I showed uh, last time that we could use a slip of yarn as a tab. But if you don't want anything sticking out, if you're more of a simple lines person like Brianne, you may enjoy um, having your samples of fat fiber or your ball band mm -hmm. in there. Now Brianne, we're, this time we're going to go ahead and put a strip of glue and we're going to put it, go ahead and leave it folded, and okay. we're going to put the strip here, and then on number one, then we'll lay number two on top of that. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. I forget, what kind of glue are we using here, Mom? This is the uh, Souk Wang, is what it's called on Amazon, and it is a, uh, oh, what is the official name we decided it was? I'll put it on the, um, as a, a notation on the video itself. Okay. Score tape. Thought of it. <laughs> Score tape uh, is the other word for it. You can find it in scrapbook shops. Now that allowed you to keep this side down. That was the reason for doing this one first. So okay. now we're going to put the glue on the bottom flap. Okay. It's my favorite for gluing. Um, for double-sided tape. I was gonna try and peel that off first, that wouldn't help. No, that would be really difficult. <laughs> I would try it though. It wouldn't be very successful, but. <laughs> Come here. I got it. All right, great. Okay, now you're gonna fold the large flap over, and I like the way you held down that tab. Okay. All right, now you see what happens when you use the double-sided paper, you get the reveal of both. Now you could have done it the other way, folded it the other direction, it would have had the orange on the outside and the stripe on the inside. That would have been fun too. That would have been. Now, where are you gonna put it? Uh, I believe I'm gonna put it just right here. Okay, I wanted to show another glue that I enjoy using, which is by Ranger, and it's the Glossy Accents. And this one can be used to make uh, 
whatever you're gluing glossy, but it's also a great glue, and I love it that it comes with this tiny little applicator top. So if you can turn your pocket over, let's give you a chance at, and to try it and see okay. what you think. Now the only thing is, when it dries, it'll be glossy, so you just want to keep that in mind. It's not going to be matte, and so don't over glue so that you have tons squishing out, Okay. unless you want a glossy halo around whatever you're doing. And that is tempting, but I think I'll pass on that for today. You can get close, but you don't want to get too close and too much that you have glue seeping out. Your typical El Elmer's won't be that visible. Okay, and now just place it on the paper? Yeah, just as simple as that. It also gives you a little bit of time to get it lined up just right, and then um, it connects fairly fastly. It, it attaches fairly fast. Did I say fastly? You did say word? fastly. It's not, but I like it, and I think <laughs> we should keep it. All right, for comparison's sake, Brianne's going to go ahead and glue up the, use the Glossy Accents glue, but you're not going to put it on that side. You're going to fold it first. Oh, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. Sure. If you happen to glue it down like that, you would have a much smaller pocket, and so you want to always glue it with the, it folded. And uh, then Brianne can, you'll, this one is not going to hold quite as well as the Souk Wing tape, so yeah, you have to be a little bit of a gymnast. Brianne! <laughs> Look at you! All gymnastic -y. You never knew, did you? Never knew. Okay, and then the third flap just gets folded down with no extra glue needed. And, and this glue needs, you know, a little bit of time to attach, so I give it a nice, you know, hand hold. Yeah. Oh, right. honey. I want to hold your hand. Right. Hmm. Okay, and then um, let's go ahead and glue it to the page. Okay. Which means we're turning over the pocket, gluing the back. I just wanted you to have a frame of reference for how it looks when you do it in scrapbook paper versus just a copy paper. I have a, um, I don't even remember what the weight of this one is, but it's a firmer uh, copy paper. Firmer meaning higher in weight. Okay. So now you could see without the uh, using it as a template, you get a, a plain tab that you could label here with fun writing that you like to do on your own, or you could cut out words and put them over here. Let's move this down a little bit. Okay. And uh, so you can embellish this however you like or leave it plain. This one has been embellished just so in case it's got something short in there, it will look nicer than just white paper, but. Um, Brianne, I want to go ahead and tuck in your little memo in there just so they Absolutely. can kind of see how it looks. Yes. And you could choose to embellish the front of this. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, are you feeling game for one extra tidbit? Bring it on. Let's go. Okay. I'm going to teach you how to draw a simple flower right here. <gasps> I want you to, we're, we're using Tombow markers today. I really enjoy them. Which, uh, pick a color. Um, does it need to be a dark color or a light color? A flower color. A flower color. Okay. Um, I really liked this color right here. Okay. So what I want you to do, and this is the simplest flower ever. You're going to be so thrilled. Okay. I want you, well, first of all, let's show them that there's two um, sizes of bristle on this type of pen. There is a larger brush tip, and then there is a marker tip. Well, I, I don't know what the technical terms are, but you can see the difference there. And what I want you to do, Brianne, is I want you to color in a circle that's about as big as a quarter. Okay. Okay, don't get fancy. It can be rough. It doesn't have to be all special. It just needs to be colored in. And if you turn your marker sideways, you can color whiter swaths of color. I'm sure you knew that. And what I think is fun with journaling is to add little hand-done touches so it looks like it's been done by a real person. What? what? <laughs> Jinx. I know, right? Mm -hmm. She could use a black marker, but I have a Sharpie here. I'm just going to have her use the Sharpie. And Brianne, what I want you to do is let me demo on another piece of paper. Let's grab one. I want you to, whoops, sorry about that, folks. I want you to make a spiral that goes around the outside of your circle 
and goes into the inside. Now you do see mine's kind of wonky. Mm -hmm. Let it be wonky because we're okay. making a flower. Does it need to go completely around the circle first? Any, not like a enclosed circle. It's more fun if it's really a spiral, but you, it's your flower, so it can be however you like. Okay, all right. This is hard for me, you know. I know, isn't it? And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the whole point. It's art. And so it's supposed to show it was from your hand. Okay. Very nice. Now, I just want you to put three dots. Let me show you again. I just want you to pick some place near the middle. Now, see, my swirls were open. Yours are more tight. That's okay. I just want you to pick what three does that places. Say about me? Yeah, right. <laughs> I just want you to put three dots somewhere in the middle. That's indicating the center of the flower. Okay. All right, now you're going to make a leaf. Do you remember what color you used to make your leaves? Um, I wanna say I used this one to do that one. I think you used this one. Okay. I could be wrong. Try that one. Okay. All right, and now what I want you to do is, okay, so here is your swirl, right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna make a leaf. We're just gonna make one leaf because we don't wanna make it pressure, right? Right. So we're gonna come out one line over here a little bit of an arch, you see that? Uh huh. One line a little bit down, starting away, and okay. then we're aiming for the tip, like that. Okay. Okay, and color it in. Okay. Like that? Yep, color it in. Okay, very good. Thanks, Mom. Welcome. Now, if you wanted to get even fancier with your flower, you could go alongside the black spiral that you just made with like a deeper orange or, or another color, and that would give it a little bit of depth. Okay. All right, but now what you're gonna do, I want you to take your black Sharpie marker, mm -hmm. and I want you to go over the outside edge again, mm -hmm. and then I want you to make a line that does a little bit of a curve like this. Not a straight line, but it's a little curve from the middle between where you started before and curve to the tip. Okay. That doesn't sound hard. It's not. And then you could be an artist. <laughs> oh, wow. If right? I had known it was that easy. Okay, now if you're a fancy person and you like things fancier than that, you can add a second leaf at the top just the way you did before. Okay. Or, so if I added a second leaf, I would do it like this. Leaf from the top and the bottom and a curved line in the middle. And then you could take your Sharpie marker and don't do it color, but just do it with a Sharpie and do a, a, a kind of a wavy line Oh, like petals. Uh-huh, kind of like petals. Now you could also choose, like say this is your, a circle, you could choose to do scallops. That's more your typical kid's sunflower. That's the kind that do. Uh-huh. <laughs> but if you did wavy, it gives it more of a look of a, you know, and you could even like, sometimes it's really fun just to do it really, this is not a Brianne thing, but yeah. no, really wavy. And you see how it starts looking even more artistic, even the leaves. Mm -hmm. look, how, look at what a different look that is. And you can say, well, I don't have a steady hand. Well, hey, you're an artist then. Look at that. That's right. Now, that may not be what everybody loves, but I think it's adorable. And I think it's fun sometimes to put a random um, dot here and there in places. But that's because I like overly embellished things. But look at how simple, with just simple circles and shapes that you're very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Now, do you like yours the way it is? I do. Okay, then we are done. Excellent. We have done a, I keep pushing this, sorry everyone. We have done a scrapbook paper pocket. We have done the printable pocket and we've shown you how to adorn your pocket with your own art. Yay. Wasn't that fun? That was fun and easy. Yes. All right, well, stay tuned. We'll have more fun things coming in the future. All right, thanks, Mom.